Are you tired of spending hours on the internet searching for information on how to compile your K1 visa packet? If so, then you've come to the right place. In today's video, we're going to cover the step-by-step -step process on how to compile your K1 visa packet. We'll work through everything from your form I-129F to supporting documents, letter of intent to marry, and everything that you need to submit to the USCIS to get approved for your K-1 visa packet. Not a lot of information on the internet that's streamlined and easy to find. We had that problem last year when we tried to compile our K-1 visa packet. But in this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know from the beginning, filling out the form I-129F right until the end when you're submitting evidence and all the information you'll need to submit to the USCIS. So stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. The subscribe button is below as well as hit the bell notification so you get notified every single time we post a new video. At this rate, we're planning on posting a video about once a week. So please do subscribe if you want to stay tuned to more of our content. Hey guys, stay tuned until the end of the video and we will give you an example of a completed K-1 packet um, so that you can feel confident and ready to send it in. Open your browser, which I'm going to be using Google Chrome. So the website for downloading your form is the USCIS.gov. We'll just open that there. Underneath the logo for the immigration services, below that you'll see forms. So just scroll over that and then there'll be a drop down menu. Um, go to the third column on the right. So this is the first column, second column, third column. We're looking for family-based form because obviously the K-1 visa is a family-based um, visa. So just click on that. That will open this page, which will give you a list of all the available forms for the family-based K, the family-based visa category. Sorry. So the form that we care about today is the petition for an alien. So that's the I-129F. So it'll give you the purpose of this form, which we all know is to bring your fiance K-1 or their children K-2 to the U.S. So that'll just give you information on suspected marriage fraud, etc. Don't pay too much attention to that. Um, the most important part is to come over here on the right to the gray button, which is form details. Just click that and then the page for the I-129 petition for an alien fiancé will load. So this is where all the magic is going to happen. This is all the important information that you'll need for the form I-129F and your visa, your K-1 visa packet. So these are all the download links. So you'll see the first paragraph and then the second paragraph is how to report suspected marriage fraud. Underneath that is help for immigration crime vi um, victims. And then below that is all the downloads, the PDF versions of the forms that you need. So obviously the most important is the top one, which is this over here, the form I-129F. So below that is the instructions for the form I-129F. We would advise that you download this form and read through this. It's only 14 pages, but it will give you information relating to how to fill out the form and any important details that you'll need to know, which we're going to cover in this video anyway. The form G1145 is the notification of acceptance of application. This is for them to notify you when they receive your application. It's good to fill this form out and submit it to them because then you'll get notified when they receive your petition. It's not the best thing, especially in this process, not to know what's happening. Um, so ideally fill this form out when they receive it, then you'll, it will kind of put your mind at ease because you'll know that they now are in position of your form. Now below this, all these gray tabs over here, important to read through. We're not going to go through them now because we don't have enough time. What I would advise is while you're filling out your form or after you've completed your packet, go through each one of these drop downs and they will show you information that pertains to the K-1 visa packet. So for example, it will show you that your I-129 form has 13 pages. If it's one page short or you've only got 12, then you know that's something wrong. Instruction page is 14 pages. Edition date as well, also very important. This will show you what edition you are printing. And at the bottom of each of the pages as well, it will show this date here. So if you're on the USCIS website and this date correlates with what's at the bottom of your page, then you know that you've got the latest edition. Also very important. Um, where to file, so this will be information on postal details, where you're going to send your K-1 visa packet. And then under here it's got tips um, for filing the I-129F. Again, can't go through all of them right now, but um, we'll cover most of them in the video. But we encourage you to come back to this page, read through all of this information, just to make sure that you've done everything right. So then again, it's got a checklist for your initial evidence. All that information is below here. So right now we're going to download the form and save it. So just simply click on it, it'll download, do the instructions, as well as the notice, notice of acceptance of application. 
So there we go. So all those forms are downloaded. We're now going to open those forms in whatever PDF reader you have, and then we'll go from there. All right, so now that we have the form pulled up, um, this whole top section, you'll just ignore that part. That's for the officer's use only. So right here, you'll see part one, information about you, and this is where you start. You can either type on your computer or um, if you prefer to print, um, print it out and fill it out, then make sure you do so in black ink. Um, so this is information about the petitioner. So if you have an alien registration number, this is where you'll fill it out. Um, and number one, number two, your account number. Again, if this doesn't apply to you, make sure that you put um, not um, none. Number three, your social security number if you have one. Um, right here, you'll select at 4A, you'll select that you are doing a K-1 fiance visa. Um, you'll fill out your full name in um, items 6, a, 6B, and 6C, uh, last, first, and middle. Moving on to the right side of the page, um, you will see other names used. So if, you have, if you have a nickname or a maiden name, any other name that would um, appear on any other kind of document is where you'll fill out your name there. Uh, mailing address is the best place for the USAS to get a hold of you. So if they're gonna send you your NOA1, NOA2, those kind of things, they're gonna need an address. So make sure that you Fill out this very thoroughly, and if um, there are any blank spots, you can just put NA. Right here, you'll say whether or not your current mailing address is the same as your physical address. So if you're getting your things mailed to somewhere else, um, other than the place that you live, you're going to need to provide your physical address as well um, later on. Um, moving on to in part one, you're going to need to put your physical address. So this is all the places that you've lived within the last five years. So if you've only lived in one place for the last five years, you'll just fill out this top one. Um, and you can just put not applicable for the other ones. If you've lived in more than two places within the last five years, you're going to need to provide those addresses as well in part eight. Uh, moving on to the right side of the page. So this is now your employment history. So again, this is the last five years. You will fill out your employer, um, the name, occupation, when you started, when you ended, all of that information. Um, again, if you've been employed at more than two places within the last five years, you will need to provide that information in part eight. Um, then you're moving on to um, other information. So your gender, date of birth, um, where you were born, and all that information. Then um, 27A, you'll see your parents' information. So you will give um, the full name of your parents, date of birth, gender, and again, where they were born and where they currently reside. Moving on to the right side of the page, parent two, you'll give the same information as parent one. Number 37, you'll see, have you ever previously been married? Um, you will either say yes or no. If yes, you, then you will need to provide the name of your previous spouse um, and then any other um, extra documentation um, to prove that the marriage has ended, whether that was through divorce or death. Um, your citizenship information, so 40A, you'll see um, they want to know how you are a US citizen. So whether that's through birth, naturalization, um, you have US citizen parents, so fill that out as it applies to you. Number 43, you'll see them ask um, whether or not you have filled out this form for any other beneficiary. So whether or not you've been engaged before to a, um, another foreign fiance, and they'll need the information that um, applies to that. If you have not filled out this form, you'll put no, and then just continue on and put um, not applicable in all of these lines. Um, you will provide whether or not you have children. So if you do, um, you can put their ages here. And if you have more than two children, you'll need to provide that information in part eight. Um, in starting at 50, you'll see that these are your residents since um, your 18th birthday. So if you've lived in mo multiple places or multiple states, multiple countries, um, you'll need to provide that information um, right there. If you've lived in more than two places since your 18th birthday, again, part eight, you'll need to explain that. Part two, now this is information about your beneficiary. So um, their name, if they have an um, alien number or a social security number, their date of birth, all of this kind of basic information, fill it out to its fullness. 
um, and then again if they have any other names used so nicknames maiden names etc um, moving on to the left side of the page in part two you'll see the mailing address for your beneficiary so fill that out the best place for them to receive mail um, like the petitioner you're gonna now do the beneficiaries address history so the last um, physical addresses that they've had for the last five years if it's more than two you'll need to provide um, those addresses in part eight moving on to the right side of the page now it's the employment history again within the last five years if it's more than um, the two spots that they give you you will need to add that to part eight <laughs> um, so now you're doing the beneficiary's parents. So the names, date of birth, gender, um, country, and then where they currently reside. You'll do that for both the parents. Um, and then other information. So at 34 on the right side of the page, you'll see um, the question, has your beneficiary ever been previously married? So you'll either select yes or no. If you select yes, you'll need to provide um, the name of the spouse and the date that the marriage ended um, and again the evidence that the, that that marriage has come to an end whether through divorce or death um, and then has your beneficiary ever been in the United States um, you will either say yes or no um, if um, yeah you'll just say yes or no <laughs> but then moving on to number 38 um, if they're currently in the United States you will enter um, how they like how they entered. So whether that was through a visitor's visa, a student visa, a work visa, um, just how they entered in their I-94 um, record number, and then also the date of their arrival. Um, and then here you'll see there that they're going to need your beneficiary's passport number, um, the travel document number, and the country that issued those documents. Um, and then at number 39 on the left side of the page, you'll see the question, does your beneficiary have any children? Um, select whichever one applies. And then um, if you say yes, you'll need to provide the name of the children, um, the date of birth, etc. cetera. Um, and if you provide no, just make sure that you write not applicable in each of those lines. Um, this is just more information about the child and uh, where they live and whether they live with the beneficiary, etc. Um, this is on the right side of the page, number 45. You'll see um, where the beneficiary tends to live once they arrive in the U.S. So um, whether that's your address or a family's address or an address that you guys will be mo moving into together, um, provide that in this space. Um, your beneficiary's physical address, number 47. Um, you will you'll put where they are currently living um, with that information. 49, you'll see that you'll need to put um, your beneficiary's name and address in their native alphabet. So if their native alphabet is English or um, English letters, then you will just either rewrite it or put not applicable. Um, if they do use a different alphabet, then you will need to write it that way in those spaces. Part two, so this is more information about your beneficiary. Um, you'll need to provide um, whether or not your fiance is related to you, um, and then how, and etc. cetera. Um, moving down to 54, this is a really important piece. So this is where you are going to provide evidence um, that you guys have seen each other within the last two years. So this is gonna be pictures, um, an in-person meeting statement, et cetera. So it seems like a small little section, but this is probably one of the most important sections on this petition. So um, for this one, I printed out a separate page with pictures and dates and things like that. So make sure that even though it's like a little space to take this part very seriously, um, and you're gonna need a little bit more information than what you can fit right here in this little box on 54. Um, if you worked through an international marriage broker, you will need to put all of that information here below. So the name, the given name, etc. Again, if this doesn't apply to you, just put not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, and keep filling it out. Um, so right here at 62 on the right side of the page, you will see that this is where um, they will, are, where they're going to communicate with the U.S. Embassy on the beneficiary side. So um, choose the um, consulate that you feel most comfortable with. 
and put that there so that they know where to send all of the information to. Um, part three, so now this is getting into other information about the petitioner. So um, even though some of these questions are tough, make sure to answer them completely truthfully um, and you will be able to explain later on um, why you answered the way that you answered. So um, put yes or no. And then in this part on the left hand side of the page, you will see that you will be able to explain a little bit more of um, kind of what happened or the circumstances of, of um, why you said yes. So yeah, again, you're gonna need to provide information about um, an arrest, citation, charges, indictments, etc., cetera. Um, and you'll provide that all in part eight. Moving to the right side of the page, um, a multiple filer waiver request. So this is where um, if you have a general waiver, you click here, 5A. If you have an extraordinary circumstances waiver, 5B. Mandatory waiver, 5C. If this doesn't apply to you, um, just click 5D or X out 5D and move on to the biographic information. So then now we're on part four. Um, again, this is the petitioner's information. So you will fill this out. Um, it's pretty much just all basic information pretty self-explanatory moving down to part five now this is where you will need to sign in ink um, your signature so even if you are filling this out online or on a PDF thing make sure that you print this out and sign it in ink um, that is very important um, so yeah part five you will fill out whichever applies to you whether or not you've done this petition yourself or you've had an interpreter or a preparer um, if you have not, just put uh, not applicable. Um, moving on to three on the left-hand side of the page, this is the petitioner's telephone number, mobile number, and email address so that they can be easily contacted if the um, USCIS has any questions or needs to contact them for any reason. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see the petitioner's declaration and, certif and certification. Um, this is, make sure to read this. This is important um, to know what you are um, signing and what you are <laughs> committing to. So um, just make sure to read that before signing. Um, 6A, so this is the this is why there's a big arrow here. <laughs> You're, this is a very important part. This is where you'll need to sign and date. Um, I'm just going to highlight this right here. <laughs> if you do not completely fill out this petition or fail to submit required documents listed, um, they may deny your petition. So very, very important. Part six, if you had an interpreter, this is where you'll put their contact information, um, certification signature. Again, if you did not have an interpreter, just put not applicable for each and every one of these boxes and move on. But you will still need to, um, even if you did not have an interpreter or a preparer, you will still need to include these pieces of paper in your petition. Um, again, just put not applicable if this does not apply to you, and if it does, fill it out to, um, the, the best of your ability. Um, again, with the preparer, if you had a preparer, make sure to fill out their um, information here. Um, on the right side, you'll see their mailing address and their contact information and then their statement. Um, and then they'll sign it and date it. And this is the big one. So now we have reached part eight and this is where you will um, put all of that information that was within the petition um, that you needed more space for, this is where you can now fill out that information. So just make sure that you put the page number of the information that you are expanding on, the part number, and the item number. And you can list that information in these boxes here. Um, again, if you need more space than they even give you here, then you can um, whip up a Word document or something else um, to add more information um, if it applies to you. So yeah, so we've reached the end um, and hopefully that helped give you a little run through of what to expect and yeah.
Here we have examples of the intent to marry and the evidence of meeting um, statement. So on the left, um, this is what I compiled and then I just filled in random information as opposed to our information, but this is the exact letter that I sent um, to the USCIS uh, with my letter of intent to marry and the statement of circumstances of meeting. So we suggest that you just pause the video so you can look through it um, because we're not gonna touch too much on it. All right, so for question 54, as you saw, um, these are the kind of evidence that you can include in your packet. So photos with each other, um, plane tickets to see each other or your boarding passes, um, gift receipts, hotel bookings, those kind of things um, to prove that you guys were in the same place at the same time and to kind of back up your claims of where you might have visited together or those kind of things. Um, you can also do a copy of both your passports showing your different travel stamps, um, copies of messages, text, emails, letters, um, just to kind of prove that you still have a genuine and ongoing relationship. Um, and then also another example is you could do a save the date for your wedding or any kind of contact that you've made with wedding service providers to again show that you intend to get married as soon as your fiance enters the U.S. The filing fee for the K-1 visa is $535. You can pay with a money order, personal check or cashier's check. We just paid with a check if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. babe. Yep. yep, simple, paid with a check. Um, and when you're filing it at the USCIS lockbox, you may also pay by credit card using a form G1450. If you have questions about the credit card, just write so in the comments section and then we'll post a link to where you can download that form. So remember that if you pay by check, you must pay your check or make your check payable to the US Department of Homeland Security. Please note that service centers are not able to process credit card payments. So, and also one more thing, um, absolutely no cash. So cash, cash is not an option. Make sure that it is a um, check money order or cashier's check. And this is an example of what your check should look like. So you've got um, the order to the US Department of Homeland Security and it's for your form I-129F filing fee or your petition for an alien fiance. The amount again, um, $535. So in terms of where you're going to send your completed packet, um, if you're going to use USPS, you will send it to the PO box that sends, to da sends it to Dallas, Texas. If you're using a different transportation, such as FedEx, UPS, DHL, you will send it to Louisville, Texas. So make sure that you have the right address with the right carrier before you send your packet. So we're now close to the end. So on the left-hand side of this page, you'll see the cover letter, which needs to accompany your K-1 visa packet. On the right-hand side, you've got a checklist that we've compiled of all the information that you will need in your K-1 visa packet. Pause this video, go through all of the, go through the entire checklist and check that you have everything you need. And we compiled this just as a way to make it easier for the officer that receives your packet to know exactly where to flip and how to kind of get through your packet effectively. All right, guys, congratulations. You've made it to the end where you're finally compiling all of your information. Um, and this is just an example of what ours looked like and the one that we sent in. So also take note, none of this information is ours. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. The first thing you're going to want is a cover letter, um, which is pretty much just the list of things that they should expect in your packet. Um, and this is what ours looked like. If you want to use it, you can uh, pause this video and make a copy of it or do what you want to do with it. Um, followed by that, you'll have the filing fee and the letter or the notification of acceptance. So if that's if you want to get an email or a text um, saying that they've received it. Then we're moving on to uh, the form I-129F. Uh, make sure that it is signed, dated, everything is filled out. Um, and then you'll have your passport style photo taken within the, la within the last 30 days. Um, then we have our letter of intent to marry, just saying that you will get married within the 90 days that you have. Um, we've got the statement of circumstances of meeting. So how we met, the places with, that we traveled, the dates we were there, etc. Then we've got the evidence of our meeting. So this is a boarding passes, text messages between us, photos of us together. If you've taken engagement photos, include some of those. Um, we included a save the date, even though we weren't entirely sure when we were going to get married. Um, it was just a nice thing for them to be able to see that we did have the plan and we were working towards that. Um, for us, this is optional, but we decided to include a, a statement of witness. So we had my dad write a little statement saying that he's met um, my fiance and that he thought that our relationship was genuine and everything like that. So um, we would say you might as well include it. It is not necessary though. Um, and then a birth certificate, just kind of proving that you are a US citizen and you are 
legally allowed to marry. Um, or you can also do uh, the passport, which is also another way to verify that. Um, for us, we included the beneficiary's passport as well, um, just as a way of um, also documenting our time together and the um, stamps between airports. So anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and hope that was helpful, but you got it. Good luck. We wish you the best. Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope this was helpful to kind of see the step-by-step -step of it all. I know at the beginning it can seem like a really um, overwhelming process and it's stressful and I'm um, just kind of trying to like get all your ducks in a row can be pretty tough. So um, we hope that this video was both encouraging but also just made the process feel a little bit easier um, and just to kind of encourage you that it is manageable, it is doable and you can do it on your own. Um, it just takes a little bit of extra time and thought and effort, um, but you can save thousands of dollars um, by doing it on your own, so. Yeah, absolutely. And if this video was helpful, please why don't you just comment in the section below. Please like this video as well, as well as hit the bell notification so you'll get notified every single time we post a new video. It really does help to support our channel as well as to get the message out to people like you who may need our help. Thank you so, so much for listening to this video today. And we hope to find you again in one of our other videos. Thank you so much.